All right, this is section 1.5. This is a lot of fun now. You guys are going to freak out because I'm actually going to say we are going to prove or proofs of trig functions. Now, this isn't as daunting or as scary as geometry proofs, but it's, it is fun. So what you're going to do is you're going to need your reciprocal or your identities for trig. And what we're going to do is we're going to use them to just simplify and prove things once we get the equal sign in the middle. So the directions of the first couple problems that we do says to rewrite in terms of sine and cosine. So if you can put them in terms of sines and cosines and see what happens, that's the easiest thing ever. So we should know that secant theta is just 1 over cosine theta. And we should know that cotangent is just cosine theta over sine theta. And good things are going to happen usually. These cross out. So your answer ends up being 1 over sine theta. Now because I said just rewrite in terms of sine and cosine, just have your answer be 1 over sine theta. Now hopefully some of you are at least looking at it saying, you know what, that's like cosecant. We're going to need to jump to that conclusion. But right now I just want it in terms of sines and cosines. So now if you have a fraction, cosecant theta we know should be, what I just got done saying, is 1 over sine theta. Over What's cotangent? It is cosine theta over sine theta. And if you have fractions on the bottom, we can multiply by the reciprocal. Why is that helpful? Because good things are going to happen. These signs cross out, and you're left with 1 over cosine theta as your answer. So that's just using the simple identities and the main goal, the main uh, rule, maybe a firm rule that I will use is if when in doubt, change everything to sines and cosines and see what happens. Okay, so that's gonna, that was kind of the main rule for this problem and will continue to be. Okay, adding or subtracting. Okay, this is a little bit more difficult. In order to add and subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. Now that's no different than anything else that you've ever done except now we have trig functions involved. So you need to get yourself a common denominator. Now in order to do that, okay, we have a sine on one side and a cosine on the other. So you need to fill in what's missing. So on this side I need to multiply by cosine theta. On top and bottom now, because this is cosine over cosine is 1. You're not changing the value any. And this one I need to multiply by sine on top and the bottom. Now by doing that, I'm going to work south or straight down. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Uh, sine theta, cosine theta in that order. Plus, sine times sine is sine squared over, I'm just writing sine first and then cosine. They can go in any order on the bottom, it doesn't matter. But now since you have a common denominator, we now can add them together. So we can say that it's cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. Now if you ever can simplify, you can. You always need to look out for this thing that's on the top. Cosine theta plus sine theta equals 1. And that's how you simplify. It's just 1 over your denominator. Okay, some of you are like, oh my god, this is nuts. Okay, what you need to do, if you notice that there's two fractions, you're going to need to combine them into one. So you need to have a common denominator. And then once you do that, once again, more times than not, good things happen. Something will probably cancel on the top. And usually it's involving your Pythagorean identity. And then you end up getting one over sine theta, cosine theta. So that is um, just a glimpse. If I ask you to multiply, this is just like foiling, so just go ahead and do that. What's first times first? Cosine times cosine would be a cosine squared theta. The outside is minus 5 cosine theta. The inside is 2 cosine theta. And then last times last is your minus 10. Now, what can combine? What are your like terms? The cosine thetas are. So I rewrite the cosine squared. This is like minus 3, minus 10. And that's it. That's as simplified as you can go. But you can FOIL trig functions. No different than anything else. Treat your trig um, cosine thetas as like a variable. That's like your x. 
Okay, some of you might want to do that instead. Maybe that's easier for you to do. You can just replace your x's with cosine theta at the end if you want to. So that there are ways around the idea if you do not like your trig things in there. Okay, proofs. Here they are. What do I have? One, two, three of them. Three of proofs. With proofs or proving that things are true using identities, you cannot, cannot, I repeat, cannot touch the right side. Okay? You move the left side into the right side. So what I need to do is try to figure out a way to show that this stuff on the left is cosine theta without touching the right side. So when in doubt, if you're not sure, the best firm rule to use is change everything into sines and cosines. Unless something jumps out at you that's very obvious. Okay, so I already have sine, but what's cotangent? It's cosine theta over sine theta. Good things happen. Sines cross out. What's left? Cosine theta. What do I want? Cosine theta. Smiley face. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Whatever you want to say, it's done. That's the idea. That's how you prove things in trigonometry. They can literally be that simple. Okay? Now, they're not always going to be that simple, but they can be. So, likewise, the next one. I need to make the left side look like cotangent. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you a little um, word of advice. You can manipulate and think about what this looks like. What do you know cotangent is? I know that it's cosine theta over sine theta. So, if you can make the left side look like cosine theta over sine theta, then you're done. Now, once again, I don't want you messing with the right side, but you can at least give yourself a little hint. Now, go back to the left side. Sines and cosines. What is cosecant related to? Well, that is 1 over sine theta. Over, what's secant related to? Well, that's 1 over cosine theta. Now, what do you notice? I can multiply top and bottom so that this goes away and what ends up being there cosine theta over sine theta is that what we want yes but you need to write the last step you need to write and tell me okay cosine theta over sine theta is your cotangent theta okay and so you're thinking wow this is not hard but it just seems kind of monotonous and kind of annoying well that's the idea of proving now these are a little bit easier we will do more difficult ones over the course of two three days in class but that's what we're looking for okay now the last one I'm gonna save the tough one for last we need to combine this left side and make it look like the right now when I see squareds and things like that I'm not gonna necessarily get caught up and worried about that yet but what I notice about this problem is that I now have two terms here, only one term here. And I have a denominator here, so I'm going to end up having a denominator. So if I'm not exactly sure what to do, sines and cosines. So I see a secant. I know that this is 1 over cosine theta minus cosine theta. Since it's a subtraction, you can't just cross these out and make 1. Okay? There's a subtraction sign. You need to find a common denominator because this is like cosine theta over 1 so I have cosine theta I need to get a cosine theta on this side on the bottom so I have 1 over cosine theta minus what's cosine times cosine on top cosine squared theta over cosine since I have a common denominator I now can combine them so the top becomes 1 minus cosine squared theta over my denominator or common denominator of cosine. So now if I look what I have, the denominator is good. I have cosine theta on the bottom, but my top is not sine squared. Well, what do I need to do here? Well, what I want to do is I just want to write what I call an aside. We know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Okay, so what we need to do is kind of solve for 1. Can you make the other one side be 1 minus cosine squared. You can by subtracting it. Alright, and then you end up getting sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. So notice that 
what we have over here shows up, but I can replace it with what it's equal to. So now I can say that sine squared theta over cosine theta, which is what we wanted. So you can check it out, smiley face it up, do whatever you want to do to be happy that you got your answer correct. So that is the idea of proving different trig functions using our identities. So there's our assignment that we'll work on in class. And please do not worry if you feel like this went right over overhead. We have three days just to work through these proofs and to keep practicing. So please keep your head up and keep working hard. And I hope you have a wonderful night.